This is Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 7.1. We're going to be looking at solving trigonometric equations graphically. That means using our calculator. And unless an interval is given, there are an infinite number of solutions. And before you begin, you need to make sure that your calculator is in the correct mode in radians or degrees. And it's always good to check before you start your calculations. So I enter mode. The first question is in degrees. So I'm going to switch over to degrees, hit enter and quit. And just like with quadratics, there is a possibility that no solutions exist, which means no answer is a solution. So our first example is solve 2 cos squared x equals 1 to the nearest tenths of a degree. Okay, so we have 2 cos squared x minus 1 equals 0. It's always easier to look for zeros. So we set that to y1 and we calc zeros. It's important to set your window properly. If you're going to use degrees, you make, you've got to make sure that you have enough to see a cycle. So negative 200 to 200 is enough. That will let us see slightly more than one cycle. So we enter 2 cos x squared. So it's important to note here that we are not squaring the parameter, we're squaring the result of the cosine. If you put the squared with the x rather than with the brackets, you're going to get a totally different result. So be careful of that. So we have 2 cos squared x minus 1, and we hit enter, and we graph. Okay, you need to find three zeros, x1, x2, x3, and I've shown that here. I will go through one example, and I will find the zero there, and there. And this result happens to be precise. So it's not a decimal value. This is negative 45 degrees. And if you do x2 and x3, you'll find that this is 45 degrees. And this is 135 degrees. Please do the calculations on your own to make sure that you're using your calculator correctly. And you should always do the difference between the solutions and their 90 degrees. This means we have one general solution because the spacing is the same. And note, this is not a first degree function, so we can't use the period simply as 360 degrees divided by B. So our answer is 45 degrees using the principal angle plus 90 degrees times N n being the set of all integers. And note this is normally the period, but this is not the case. And it's not the case because of this. Okay, let's look at the next problem. We need to solve 16 equals 6 cos of pi over 6x plus 14 and to the nearest hundredth of a radian. So we need to move everything over to one side. We have 0 equals 6 cos pi over 6 of x minus 2. We set this equal to y1 and calc the zeros. Clear, and 6 cos, we're going to put pi x divided by 6, minus 2. 
And we have to be careful about where we put brackets. And we need to set the window. And we'll use the suggested values over here, negative 10. One, negative 10, five. And we need to set a larger range because we look at the amplitude there. And that suggests that we need a range that has 12. So this is negative 10 to five, so that's a range of 15. And next we need to be in the correct mode, so that's radians. And graph. And we need to find three zeros. So I'll find the first one, x1. And we have negative 2.35. And this is approximate, negative 2.35. You'll find the other one's 2.35 and 9.65. We look for the differences again. This is 4.7, and this is 9.65. So we don't have an even spacing. And as the note says here, we could use x1 or x3 for the general solution, because we see that it repeats here and here. But in this case, it's better to use x1 and x2 for your solutions, even though x1 is not a principal angle, because it shows symmetry. This is an even function. It's reflected on the y-axis. So let's calculate our period. Our period is 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over pi over 6. So that's 12. So we have answers of negative 2.35 plus 12n and 2.35 plus 12n. N being the set of integers. And just to remind you, this is period times n. Okay, and our period we calculated was 12. Now, you could have done x3 minus x1 to get your period. And in this case, it would have worked out to 12. But sometimes you'll get rounding errors. So it's better to calculate your period directly if it's possible. Let's look at the next problem. Solve 4 sine squared x equals negative 1 to the nearest hundredths of a radian. So we change our window. We need negative 10 to 10. And this is our amplitude. So we should go from negative 1 to 6. And we are looking for 4 sine squared x plus 1 equals 0. Set this to y1 and we calculate the zeros. But once you plot it, you'll see that this is the max. This is the min. And there's no solutions. Never crosses the x-axis, so there's no zeros. And the reason for this is because sine squared x is always positive. And because we're adding a positive value, to another positive value, we're not going to get zero. So the key for this section is to make sure you, you adjust the window to see at least one cycle, preferably two cycles. And this is twice the period for the domain and the amplitude. And the center line should be calculated to get your range. And again, make sure you're in the proper setting for degrees or radians, or you're gonna get the incorrect answer. And remember, if you're in degrees, 
you need a large domain in order to see your cycles. And you can use intersections to calculate your solutions, but I think it's easier to find zeros. So move all the terms over to one side and set y1 equal to that expression. And that completes this lesson.